Okay, all right, Bernie. Okay, calm down a little bit. Okay, our first game is called the clock game, and here's how it works. We'll show you a prize, and you'll have 30 seconds to guess how much it costs. I'll be helping you out by telling you whether your bid should be higher or lower. If you guess the right price, you win the prize. Do you understand? Yeah, all right. Okay, Woo! here's what you could win. A waterbed. John, tell us about it. It's a bed filled with water, Jack. All right. Okay, Bernie, are you ready? Yeah, Jack. Okay, the clock will start with your first bid. Okay. Okay, start guessing. What? Start guessing the price. Start making bids. Oh, right, okay. Uh, woo! Uh, one dollar. Higher. Two dollars. Higher. Uh, three dollars. Higher. Really? Yes. Okay, four dollars. Much higher. Uh, ten million dollars, Jack? Lower, lower, lower. Five dollars. Higher. Uh, five fifty. Much higher. Eleven dollars. Much, much higher. Ten million dollars. Lower. I don't understand this game. Didn't guess the price. I didn't. No, no, John. What was the price of the waterbed? The price of the waterbed was nine hundred and fifty dollars, Jack. Oh, I was gonna say that next. Well, you didn't, Bernie. But you'll get a second chance to win in round two when we come back on higher. And now, an important message from Nobel Prize winner. Brent Carlyle. Hello, I'm Brent Carlyle. I'm a genius. I won the Nobel Prize for Physics last year. A great honor, certainly, but it doesn't pay the bills. And that's why I'm selling pieces of my brain. That's right, now you can purchase actual pieces of Brent Carlyle's brain at an affordable price. Great for parties, school science projects, or practical jokes. So make your order now and be the first one on your block to possess the brain of a genius. Thank you. <laughs> and welcome to Issues at Hand. My guests tonight are Dr. Josh Friedkin from the North American Zoological Institute. Dr. Friedkin. Good evening. It's a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to have you here. And Dr. Bill Fonstein from the Center for Biological Research at the University of Manitoba. Hi, it's a pleasure to be here. Pleasure to have you here. And I'd just like to add before we begin that is really an honor for me to have both of you here this evening. Well, it is a pleasure to be here. I wouldn't miss it for the world. And I would not miss having you here for the world, honestly. Well, it's certainly wonderful to have been chosen to be on this show. It's an absolute delight, really. And it is an absolute delight to have you both here this evening. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. Well then, let's get on with the issue at hand, which of course is why you're both here. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And might I say that it is an honor to have you both here this evening to discuss this issue. It's certainly an honor to be here. It was wonderful to be chosen to be on your show. And you know, it was wonderful to choose you to be on the show. Well, thank you very much. Yes, thank you. Well, gentlemen, we didn't get to the issue at hand, but I'd like to thank both of you for being here. Well, thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure being here. It was really great to be here, really. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, both of you, once again, for being here. Well, it certainly was an honor to be here. Thank you very, very much for having me on the show. It was a very great pleasure for me to be on the show. Well, it was a great pleasure to have you on the show. I wouldn't have missed it for anything, really. Well, that's all the time that Excuse we have. Excuse me, but before we go, I'd just like to point out that, well, I'd just like to thank you once again. It was a pleasure to be here. Well, it was a great pleasure to have you on the show, both of you. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me, certainly. Well, we're really out of time now. Thank you both once again. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. A wonderful experience. It was a greater honor to be on your show. It was an incredible honor to have you here. And that's about it for this evening. Thank you both very much once again for being here in the studio. It was an honor and a pleasure to have you both here. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure being here. Indeed, it was a pleasure. <laughs> Introducing a brand new scent for women only from Fabergé. It's Ernest Borgnine perfume. I love Ernest Borgnine perfume. It makes me feel like, how you say, like a woman. Thank you, Ernest Borgnine. Ernest Borgnine perfume from Fabergé.
So, what's on the old tube? Ah, tonight, nothing. <laughs> the Beachcombers is on. <laughs> oh, that's a lousy show, eh? Ah, it's the worst. It's been on forever. I don't think I've ever seen an episode. You've never seen one? No. I saw one episode, I think. Oh, yeah? Yeah, by mistake, you oh, know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was pretty good. What happens is Nick falls in the water. Oh, that was a good one. Oh, it was good. I mean, uh, uh, for the Beachcombers, it was good. Yeah, yeah, for a bad show, it was yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, for a bad show. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I think I might have seen part of an episode once myself. Oh, yeah? Which one? When Nick uh, gets married. Oh, yeah, but he doesn't? No, he doesn't. He chickens out at the end. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> Uh, in a bad way. Well, yeah, it was, yeah. It was yeah. great in a bad way. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, usually when I watch it, I'm not trying to watch it, but there's a great American show on after it. Yeah, the American show after. Yeah, yeah, so accidentally. You'll you know. see it. You don't want to, but it's on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You ever see episode 242? When they go to Greece? Yeah. Oh, that was good. That was great. It was two hours. It had two hours special. It was the best. B but still, it was it was bad. Uh, yeah, yeah. You, you know, I don't watch it. My kids watch it. They like it, so I walk in the room, and there it is. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. my little Bruno's really into it. Yeah, what about your older son? Jerusi. Yeah. Oh, he's growing out of it now. Ah, oh, it's too bad. Oh, kids, you know. <laughs> hey, look at the time! Ah! It's on! We missed the first 30 seconds! Turn it on, quick! We interrupt the Beachcombers to bring you this special message. Uh -huh. If you're a Beachcombers fanatic, there's a new service just for you. Oh. It's a 24-hour-a-day phone line with specially trained counselors to help you with your Beachcombers problems. Just call the number on your screen now. Wow, sounds great. I wonder if all calls are confidential. All calls are confidential. Perfecto. Beachcombers Hotline, you're on the air. What? On the air? The guy on TV said it was confidential. Come on, don't keep Canada waiting. What's your name? Oh, uh, Stan Brunk. Okay, but... Stan, what's your obsession? What's your problem? Well, I'm obsessed with the beachcombers. Yeah, uh-huh. I wallpapered my house with posters of Relic, and I've memorized the dialogue to all the episodes. Stan and... Brunk, you are pathetic. Listen, I gotta let you go, because we're coming up to news time right after this commercial message. You can't help me at all? It's, it's Crazy, crazy Sammy's, Sammy's Warehouse Sale! Hi, I'm Crazy Sammy. Heck, I must be crazy to be selling TVs and VCRs at such low prices. 20% off all VCRs. I'm nuts. Up to 30% off all television sets. I'm insane. I mean, I'm not really insane. Doctors aren't after me or anything. But my prices are so low, you might think I'm acting irrationally. I'll see you here at Crazy Sammy's. Crazy, crazy Sammy's, Sammy's Warehouse, Warehouse Sale! sale. It's, it's crazy! crazy. And Bernie, we're going to play the Giant Ruler Game! Woo! And you'll have to guess the prize of... This waterbed! Tell us about it, John! It's the same waterbed as before, Jack! Yeah! Woo! Well, you're pretty lucky, Bernie, because I told you the price of the waterbed earlier, so you're going to know where to stop the giant hand, right? Yeah, Jack! Okay, the giant hand will start going up the ruler now! Okay, go, all okay, right. Okay, the giant hand is pointing at $200. Higher, higher. higher. $500, what are you gonna do? I'm gonna let it go. Very good, I'm very good. It go. It's at $700, go it's getting ahead. there. Keep going, ahead. Okay, Keep it's nearing going. 900 All right, Get ready Keep to going. push the stop button. All okay, right. 950, right. Bernie. Keep going. 950, anytime. Go. Bernie, higher. you're letting it go, it's at 900. Higher. Oh, I yeah. told you the price Keep earlier. Going. It's higher. at $2,000 now. Just push the stop button anytime. Will you stop the hand? Come on, It's at $5,000. It's at the top. It's past the numbers. Push the stop button. Stop the hand! Stop the hand! Stop the hand! Stop the hand! You broke the giant ruler game! The hand fell over. I know it fell over. It's no use pushing the stop button now. No? I told you the price before. John, what was the price of the waterbed? The price of the waterbed was $950, Jack. It's the same waterbed. I'm sorry, Jack. All right. We'll be back on higher lower after this. And now, an important message from Brent Carlyle. Hi, I'm Brent Carlyle. Just reminding you that pieces of my brain are still available for purchase. But hurry, they're selling like hot pants. They're great for using as a doorstop or a bedspread or Belgium. So, order now and be one of the people on your block. Thanks.
Remember that great song? Well, now you can get that immortal classic and 11 other blasts from the past on Borpo Records' hot new album, Golden Memories of Experimental Forays into Atonal Musical Compositions. Take a walk down memory lane with this wonderful collection of songs from days gone by. You get the Alderson Project's Treatise on Chromatic Disintegration. Ah. Ooh. Ah. Ooh. Ah. Uh -oh. Yes, it's an album that will bring you back to a time of surf, sun, and dissonant melodic instrumentation. Reminisce while listening to Eli Furstenberg's classic Random Composition for Treated Guitar and German Shepherd. <laughs> And what record of this magnitude would be complete without Tie a yellow ribbon around the old oak tree. Tie a yellow ribbon around the old oak tree. So order your copy of Borpo Records Golden Memories of Experimental Forays into Atonal Musical Compositions today. Save COD charges by telling the postman that you don't have any money and could he please come back next week and then move. If you still want me, if you still want me, if you still want me. Well, here it is. Oh, wow, that's amazing. Look at all this stereo equipment. Yeah, it cost me a bundle, but it's great, let me tell you. Look at all these records. That's incredible. That's a whole wall full of records. How many do you have? Uh, I figure about 5,000 records, yeah. Wow, that's an incredible collection. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty big. So, sit down. Let's listen to something. Okay. Okay, what do you want to hear? Anything at all? I have everything. Anything you want. Mop the hoople. What? Mop the hoople. Mott the Hoople? Yeah. I don't have any Mott the Hoople. You don't have any Mott the Hoople? No, I don't. I thought you had everything. Well, I don't have Mott the Hoople. I mean, I've heard the name, but I don't have any other records. Oh, well. Listen, listen. Forget about Mott the Hoople. Anything else, I've got it. I got Rolling Stones. I got early rock and roll, some rare stuff. I got classical. I've got lots of country albums over here. New Age, the whole Beatle collection. I've got it. What do you want to hear? Oh, if you don't have any Mott the Hoople... Will you forget about Mott the Hoople already? I've got 5,000 records. There must be something else you want to hear. Oh, actually, there is. I just thought of something. Okay, great. What is it? Spooky Tooth. Spooky Tooth? Yeah, put him on. This is going to be great. Spooky Tooth on a great stereo. I don't have any Spooky Tooth. You don't have any Spooky Tooth? No. Well, do you have anything? I've got everything except for stupid bands like Mott the Hoople and Spooky Tooth. Do you like these bands? Oh, yeah, I love them. They're super good. What were their hits, anyway? Uh, hits? Uh, I don't know if they had any hits. Well, name me some of their songs. I don't know any of their songs. I like the names. That's how you pick the bands you like if you like the name? What are you, a moron? Well, if you're gonna get that way, I'm gonna leave. Sit down! Pick something else. Well, I don't know. Pick! Bell Epoch? Who the hell is Bell Epoch? I think they did some disco stuff a few years back. Listen, if you don't have any Bell Epoch, I'm gonna leave. No, 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 wait, 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 sit down, sit down. I got some, uh, some, uh, some Google gags. Google gags? Yeah, the Google gags are great. You're gonna love them. Well, they sound terrific. Put them on, by all means. Yeah, yeah, they're good. Hey, Jude. Wow, these guys are amazing. The Google gags, eh? Wow. Take a sad yeah. song and make it better. Remember to let her into your heart. Yes? Ron, how's it, Graham? What the? Yes? Are you Mrs. Stevenson? Yes, I am. Oh, sorry. Wrong house. It's the wonderful world of words with your host, Robert Ildow. Hello, I'm Robert Ildow. You know, each one of us uses hundreds of different words each day to communicate with others. Yet we seldom take the time to think of what words really are. A word is a sound, or a combination of sounds, that are used as a symbol for a thing, or a concept, or even a person. Take the word morning, for example. Morning. The sounds more and ning really mean nothing at all. But once our brain kembles this information and renders rock oval chest often, so beely that we are coalesced exactly of the sound, it really flackles the mind. Until next time, I'm Robert Ilda with the wonderful world of words. Good night. And now, Radio Free Vestibule presents Alcoholics Anonymous on a Field Trip. A hundred bottles of beer on the wall, a hundred bottles of beer. 
Have some coffee and try not to think about it. A hundred bottles of beer on the wall. A hundred bottles of beer on the wall. A hundred bottles of beer. Have some coffee and try not to think about it. Hello? 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 Yes? Is Kathy there? Uh, no, you have the wrong number. Hello, you have the wrong number. Okay? Could you speak, please? Can I speak to Kathy, please? No, there is no Kathy here. You have. My name is not Kathy. She probably gave you the wrong number, and I don't blame her. Is this five 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 three one zero one? Nope. You're not even close. Every single number is wrong. You dialed every single number incorrectly. You must have the worst eye-hand coordination in the world. I'm afraid you have the wrong number. Hello. Could you speak up, please? I'm afraid that for some reason I am unable to hear you, whoever you are. Hello? Uh, um, is this the house of Kathy Grunmeyer? Oh, Kathy Grunmeyer. Why, yes, as a matter of fact, there are ten Kathy Grunmeyers living here. This is the Grunmeyer household. I'm Joe Grunmeyer. How are you, you moron? You're a moron! Sheesh. Uh, enough is enough. <clears throat> Kathy Grunmeyer speaking. Kathy, you sound kind of funny. Uh, I, I have a cold. Mm -hmm. uh, are you going to the party tonight? Uh, no, I can't come out tonight because I'm feeling uh, very suicidal. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I think I'll kill myself right now. Oh, here's my gun. Blam! Ah! Boom. Oh, my God. Oh, I can't believe it. Oh, Kathy, <laughs> Kathy has killed herself. Oh, what a terrible tragedy has struck our home. Well, I, I guess she will never be able to receive any more phone calls. Really? Nope, no more phone calls. Is Brenda there? I say potato. And I say dentist. I say tomato. And I say dentist. Potato. Dentist. Tomato. Dentist. Let's call the whole thing off. Why? What's the matter? Okay, we're back for our last game on Higher Lower, and our contestant is Bernie Welcome. Ooh. Now, Bernie, let me run this by you again. You could win the sports car if you run up to it, pick the right price tag, that's either the $20,000 or the $2, mm. and bring it back to the board within 30 seconds. Are you ready? Yeah, Jack. Okay, the clock will start now. <laughs> And now, an important message from Brenda Carlisle. Hello, I'm Brent Carlisle's wife. My husband is now buying back pieces of his brain at double the original price. Please notify us. Please, please notify us. Honey, could you keep it down? No, please. As I was saying, please notify us if you have a piece of my husband's brain. Brain for sale. Now, no, honey, we're not selling any more of your brain. Do you understand? We're not. What? Get away. I'm on the air. Get away. Come on, Michael. I don't want to go to 
to Toronto. I don't want to go. All of the docks are square. None of the streets are twisted. None of the streets are paved with bricks. There's too many elevators in Toronto. Not enough stairs in Toronto. Not enough stairs. All of the food in Toronto is made of edible oil products. They don't have bagels in Toronto. They have donuts. Donuts made of edible oil. I don't like donuts. They don't have bagels. I don't want to go to Toronto. People don't have faces in Toronto. They have cigarette ads instead. They listen to your phone calls. There's a tower in Toronto that controls people's minds. It's illegal to possess brightly colored balloons in Toronto. Illegal to own brightly colored balloons. All of the children in Toronto must wear suits. Even the girls, three-piece suits. The buildings in Toronto have no windows. I don't want to go. Everyone lives in subterranean caverns filled with donuts made of edible oil. I don't want to go. Nobody goes to the bathroom in Toronto. They have a special operation. They have it removed surgically. There's a tax on all wicker goods in Toronto. There's huge buildings with no windows on streets with no curves. And inside you find little girls in suits running around with black balloons and munching on edible oil products. The kids don't have names. They have numbers which are assigned to them at birth. They're called 387.7, 412.9, and they all have cigarette ads instead of faces. I don't want to go to Toronto. I don't want to go. I have plenty of wicker goods. I don't want a tax on my wicker goods. I like going to the bathroom. I don't want to go to the hospital. I don't want to go to Toronto. I don't want to go. Do I have to go to Toronto? Do I? Do I have to go? I don't want to go. Do I have to go to Toronto? That was Radio Free Vestibule. Radio Free Vestibule was written and performed by Terence Bowman, Bernard Benige, and Paul Parry. Sound effects by Bill Robinson. Recorded by Robert Lackey. Special thanks to Tim Burns and Sebastian Hassinger. Produced by David Milligan. How many times has this happened to you? No more, because now you can shine your shoes the easy way with Borpo's all-new Easy Shine. Easy Shine makes shining shoes easy. So get Easy Shine and turn this <laughs> into this. What are you doing? I'm shining my shoes. So go out and look for Easy Shine. That's right, Easy Shine. E-Z Shine. That's right. It's not the word easy written out. It's the letters. It sort of sounds like it when you pronounce the Z and Z. It sounds like Easy Shine. Easy Shine. Get it today. Live from MJL Studios and broadcast coast to coast, it's Let's Talk with Murray Myron. And now here he is, Murray Myron! Hi, 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 welcome to Let's Talk. I'm Murray Myron. Tonight it's a pleasure to have in the studio a graphic artist whose work we've all seen, Mr. Henry Pitfield. How are you, Henry? Well... Henry, you are the artist who back in the late 40s designed the Pizza Chef guy. Yeah. Now, this is a character we've all seen a million times. He's the Italian guy with a chef's hat, a little mustache. He's looking at the pizza. He's going, mwah, and he's making the OK sign with his fingers there. And now, this is a character just about every Italian restaurant sign, every pizza box, every menu has used. This is a very popular character. I got screwed. What? I got screwed real bad. Really? Yeah. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. So you don't feel that you uh, got enough for your design. Um, how much did you get for that, if you don't mind my asking? Twenty dollars. Twenty? Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's understandable. I mean, you were young. You didn't know the business that well, I guess. Uh, did you give away all the rights to the design? Yeah. 
Everything. I, I can't even doodle them at home. They could shoot me on the spot, apparently. Wow. Yeah. Well. Oh, well. What's done is done. Mm. Any other designs of yours we might know? Uh, maybe. Uh, in, in 1955, I did something... Uh, you, you know when a TV station goes off the air, you see the head of an Indian guy, circles in the corners there? You did that? Yeah. That is incredible. That is such a famous thing. Everybody's seen that. Millions of people have stared at that Indian head. That's incredible. So how much did you... $20. Uh, Oh, no. Yeah. $20 again. Yeah. So I guess you can say... And if you say... think about it, $20 in 1955 is probably worth even less than $20 in the 40s. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's true. And after the bad deal you made with the pizza guy design, you didn't think of asking for more money uh, this time? No. So I guess you could say that on the business side of things... I'm you're not... really bad at that. Yeah, well... Yeah. On the bright side, it must feel nice to see your creations being so popular and all over the place that all the time. It feels horrible. Right, right, right. Okay, well, let's not dwell on the past. What have you been doing lately? Any projects you're working on right now? Well, actually, I've got a new character I'm trying to sell. Really? Yeah, yeah, it's sort of... Uh, actually, I've got it right here. Here, see? Uh, this would be for dry cleaners to put in their windows. Let me see that. You see? Wow. For, for the windows of dry cleaners. Wow, you got the little that's guy great. There. That's brilliant. Thanks. Wow. I'll give you 20 bucks for it. Great. There you go. Oh, wow, thanks. $20. You're welcome. Wow. You're very, very welcome, Henry. Wow. Well, that's all the time bucks. we have on Let's Talk Tonight. Our guest bucks. was Henry Pitfield. I'm See rich. you next time. I'm Murray Myers. Bye bye. Wow, I'm rich. What is Do you own a cellular phone? Do you carry it with you wherever you go? Well, what if it gets lost? What if it gets stolen? What if you forget it somewhere? What if you drop it in the street and a big truck runs over and it gets smashed into a million pieces? Which is exactly what happened to me. Hi, I'm Frank Orlano, and I'm here to tell you about an incredible new invention, the Brain Cellular. What is it, you ask? It's exactly what it sounds like, a cellular phone that's implanted directly into your brain. And it's on all the time, so you will never miss a call. Ah, ha, 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 ha. Hello, Frank Orlano speaking. No, this is not Eastern Airlines. They have a new number now. Yeah, that's right. They have a new number. They gave me the old number. Okay, bye-bye. See how great it works? All right, that wasn't a very good example. It was a wrong number. But say it had been somebody calling me to say, I don't know, uh, hey, Frank, I want to give you a million dollars. I wouldn't have missed that call because I've got a cellular phone in my brain. And you can, too. Will this involve long, painful hours of brain surgery, you ask? Yes, the answer is yes. They're installing a phone into your brain. What do you expect? Do you think this is easy? They've got to go, oh, oh, oh. Hello, Frank Ola No, this isn't Eastern Airlines. They have a new number. Stop calling me. So get a brain cellular today and never, ever, ever miss a single phone call again. You all... <laughs> Hello? No, it's you again. It's the voice. Stop calling me. Stop calling my brain. I've got a phone in my brain, do you understand? So get a brain cellular today. It's the greatest single thing. <laughs> Stop calling me. Stop calling my brain! I've got a phone in my head! Do you understand? It's in my head! Stop calling me! I've got a phone in my brain! Stop calling me! Hey kids! Welcome to Playtime with Quonky! Yeah! I'm Quonky the Clown! Hello, Quonky! Now let's bring out our friend, Timmy the Toy! Yay! Hi, kids. How you doing? Hi. Hi. Hello, Timmy. How are you today? Uh, I'm fine. I'm fine. Are you hungry, Timmy? Uh, no, actually. I'm really stuffed. I just had a big breakfast. Oh, Timmy's a hungry toad, kids, and we all know what toads like to eat, don't we, kids? Flies! That's right. Did everybody bring their flies for Timmy today? Yes! Okay, then. Feed them your flies. <laughs> Come on, kids, one at a time. Oh, boy, Timmy loves those flies, doesn't he? Yum, 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 yum. Okay, now Timmy's been fed, and he's a happy toad, aren't you, Timmy? Oh, yeah, I'm overjoyed, Quonky. Now, okay, kids, what else do toads like to do? Swim! That's right, so Timmy's gonna go swimming in that icky, slimy swamp. Yeah! Well, we want to do something new. Yes, it's something new, Timmy. It's a surprise just for you. Look, we've got your very own swamp with yucky green water and everything. Yeah! I'm swimming, are you crazy? I can't swim in the suit, it's too heavy. Just go swimming in the swamp. No, I can't go swimming in the costume. Come on, just a little paddle around. No, no way, not in the suit. Well, well if Timmy doesn't want to go swimming, kids, 
then what are we going to do? The Stone Dead! That's right! Oh, no, not the Stone Dead, no, no, no. Did no, no, everybody no, no. bring their stones? Yeah! Okay, well, start dancing, Timmy. <laughs> Gonna go swimming, kids! Yay! Ah, don't those stones are going swimming in the swamp! All right, here he goes up the ladder. Oh, 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 look at the big splash, kids! He's uh, he's he's sinking like a stone. <laughs> uh, but but that's okay, kids, because uh, that's what toads like to do when they're when they're hiding from big fish, right? Is he gonna be <laughs> all right? Uh, of course he's gonna be all right. He's fine. Yay! Somebody get him out of there. Okay, that's the end of the show, kids. Uh, join us next week when we'll have a brand new friend on the show, Freddy uh, the Frog. So bye for now. Get him out of there before the cops show up. Bye-bye! Bye-bye, kids! Repeat what I say, repeat what I say. I say sandwich. Curriculum. Ah! Repeat what I say, repeat what I say, repeat what I say. I say flowers. Briquette. Ah! Repeat what I say. Repeat what I say, repeat what I say, I say tiger, ameliorate. Ooh, ah, ah, ooh. Repeat what I say, repeat what I say, repeat what I say, I say apple, punctuous apple. Repeat what I say, sorry. And now it's night of a thousand stars. Hello, I am Fringo. I am Carol Pesci. And I am Okasati. And welcome to Night of a Thousand Stars. Bowling is an interesting game. In bowling, you must knock down all the pins. With a ball. Yes. Well, that's it for Night of a Thousand Stars. I'm Carol Pesci. I'm Fringo. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Okasati, you forgot to say anything again. Oops. Coming this Sunday on the CBC, the comedy duo that's been poking fun at Canadian politics for over 40 years, it's Flanagan and O'Hare in their annual TV special. Flanagan, good to see you, old buddy. Good to see you too, O'Hare. You know, it took me two months to get here. Two months? Why is that? Did your car break down? No. Did you try to take via rail? No. Well, then, was your flight delayed? No. Well, then, why did it take you so long to get here? I mailed myself by Canada Post. <laughs> Witness the delightful satire of Flanagan and O'Hare as they take a handful of world events, throw in some cutting commentary, and spice it up with their own special brand of humor. Say, O'Hare, have you done any traveling recently? Why, yes, I was just in Ottawa, and you know, I just love that big mountain they have there. Mountain? There's no big mountain in Ottawa. Sure there is. There's a big mountain right next to the Parliament building. Hold on, hold on. That's no mountain you saw. No? No, that was Brian Mulroney's chin. Oh! Thanks, everyone. Now, here's a little ditty. We're doing the free trade shuffle. First he gives away our jobs, then he gives away our money. Don't you wish we could just give away Mulroney? It's a delightful hour of songs and sketches that you and your family will love. Tell me, Mr. Barassa, do you believe in Santa Claus? No, Brian, but I do believe in a notwithstanding clause. <laughs> the Flanagan and O'Hare special, Sunday on the CBC. I'm MC Mulroney. And I'm cool Michael J. Wilson. And we're here to get down. Down in the popularity pools, that is. Whoa. It's 
the GST rap with the new dance sensation. It's the GST rap. It's bankrupting the nation. You do the dance at the store. GST. At the store you do the dance when you pay. GST. Seven percent. When you pay, when you pay, the nation, 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 seven, 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 seven. Show us your tapeworms, America. Worm away is here for us today. Paul Roberts in Oakland, California. I had mine for over six months. Graham Kelly, Miami, Florida. Mine was over five feet long. <laughs> Joey Vincelli, New York, New York. I didn't even know I had one. Show us your tapeworms, America. We're there. Now, Worm Away is here for us today. Show us your tapeworms, America. Paramount Pictures presents Spike Connors as he explodes onto the motion picture scene in Magnum Heat. Not only is he a mean killing machine, but he's got more catchy lines than Eastwood, Schwarzenegger, Bronson, and Stallone combined. Who is it? Avon calling. Ah! Connors, he's tough, he's fearless, and he never pulls the trigger without making a snappy remark first. It's howdy duty time. He's armed only with his wit and an Uzi automatic. It's not the heat, it's the humidity. Magnum Heat, starring Spike Connors, coming to theaters everywhere. Okay, man, then kill me! All right. Uh, wait a minute. Okay, it's, uh, it's howdy duty time. No, I did that one already. Kill uh, me, man! All right, hold on, hold on a sec, hold on. Look, ma, no hands. No, that's not entirely applicable. I'm using both my hands at the moment. Uh, how about that? You're watching PBS. Hello, I'm Louis Rukeyser, and welcome to Wall Street Week. Tonight, we look at the fluctuations experienced with the Dow Jones this week. We'll also look at the kind of trends we can expect to see in the... In the what's that noise? There's someone screaming out there. What's going on? Uh, that's uh, oil painting with William Alexander. They're taping next door. Well, we'll have to stop that. Excuse me. Yes? We're taping Wall Street Week next door, and you're making a lot of noise. Oh, well, I get excited when I put the mighty highlights on the mighty mountain. See? Look, you take the mighty brush, and look at the light shining down. Yeah, that's very nice, but if you could just keep it down, please. Oh, very well. I am sorry. Thank you. Welcome to Wall Street Week. Tonight we'll be talking about the mighty, that is, the trading this week on the Dow Jones Industrial Exchange. And we will, oh, jeez. I asked you to keep it down. But I didn't know the flowers would be so beautiful when you put the highlights with the mighty. Welcome to Wall Street Week. Tonight we look at the fluctuations experienced with the Dow Jones this week. We'll also look at the kind of look trends we can expect to see down. in the... It's so in beautiful, the, uh, What's that noise? There's someone screaming out there. What's going on? Uh, that's uh, oil painting with William Alexander. They're taping next door. Well, we'll have to stop that. Excuse me. Yes? We're taping Wall Street Week next door, and you're making a lot of noise. Oh, well, I get excited when I put the mighty highlights on the mighty mountain. See? Look. You take the mighty brush and look at the light shining down. Yeah, that's very nice. But if you could just keep it down, please. Oh, very well. I am sorry. Thank you. Welcome to Wall Street Week. Tonight we'll be talking about the mighty, that is, the trading this week on look the Dow Jones Industrial light. Exchange. So and we will... Look oh, jeez. The painting. I, I asked you one. to keep it down. But I didn't know the flowers would be so beautiful when you put the highlights with the mighty brush. I don't care about the mighty brush. But look at the painting. Isn't it beautiful? It looks like something you buy half price in a bin at Woolworths. Are you making fun of the mighty painting? Yes. Very well. I keep it down. Good. 
<sighs> Welcome to Wall Street Week. Mighty boss, mighty boss. I'm gonna kill that guy. Look, will hey, you stop it already? Will you look? Ow, stop hey, that! All right, I'm me. asking yeah, you to keep I it down. Oh, I'm gonna ow, smash ow, your mighty ow, face I, in. I, I jumped down. Down. You've been watching Wall Street with Louis Rukeyser. Mavis, what are you doing? I'm cleaning my toilet duck. Your toilet what? My toilet duck. What's that? Why, haven't you heard? They've developed a rubber ducky just for the toilet. What does it do? It floats, and it doesn't go down when you flush. That's handy. Yes, and it costs less, too. Less than what? Less than a fridge or a toaster or, well, it would certainly cost less than a car. It costs less than a house or a large box containing expensive yes, jewelry. Yes, 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 but is it easy to clean? Not really. Oh, well, you can't have everything. New from Kelco, toilet duck. Just because you can't have everything doesn't mean you can't have a duck in your toilet. If you're looking for a product, you're in luck. <coughs> it's Kelco's Toilet Duck. Hello, I'm Ted Connolly, and this is News Center. Welcome to our special coverage of the National Party Conference, which is taking place at the Convention Center downtown. We now go live to Bill Jacobs, who is on the convention floor. Bill? Bill? Hello? Uh, we seem to be experiencing some technical One, two, problems. Testing. Testing. Oh, is here he is there? now, Bill. It's not there. Okay, I'll wait. Go ahead, Bill. Bill. Okay. Well, we seem to have lost hello? the connection again. Hello, Ted. Oh, here he Ted. is, Bill. Ted, is that you? Yes. Hello, Bill. Hi. How are you? Fine, Bill. How are the kids? Uh, we're on the air right now, Bill. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us what's going on at the conference? Oh, not very much right now, Ted. It's very, very quiet down here. Everything's sort of settled down here, and I'm afraid there's not much to report right now. This is Bill Jacobs reporting. Uh, Bill, I wonder if you could elaborate at all. Has the Premier arrived, for instance? Hello? Yes? Is that Bill you, Ted? Yes, it is, Bill. I'm asking you a question now. Okay. Uh, has the Premier arrived? Yes, yes, he arrived. Oh, he has arrived. Uh-huh. Uh, did he give his speech? Well, he gave part of his speech, but uh, let's just say he couldn't exactly finish it. This is Bill Jacobs reporting. I, I don't understand, Bill. Why didn't he finish his speech? He was shot five times in the head. Uh, I'm sorry, Bill. And it you know, sounded to me like there was you said that. supposed to be 80,000 balloons dropping from the ceiling of the convention mm. center, and I think it would have looked very, very spectacular. Uh, Bill, they Bill, were supposed um, to come down at 2 o'clock. They still haven't come down. I don't know what's the problem. Bill, Bill. Yeah. Bill, did I hear you correctly? Yes, 80,000 balloons of all different colors. No, no, not the balloons, Bill. Not the balloons. It sounded to me like you said that the premier had been shot. Yeah, yeah, I did. Oh, my God. Uh, what's his condition? Oh, he's dead. Come on. I mean, five shots in the head. You don't survive something like that. Ladies and gentlemen, we have just learned that the premier has been assassinated. This is a major tragedy. And we're... Off, it's very hot down here, Ted. I'm sweating like a pig. Like a pig. It's Bill, kind of a Bill, sticky sort Bill, of Bill, have sweat. the police managed to apprehend the assailants? Uh, no, 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 no. Why is that, Bill? Well, I guess they feel if they try something, he might shoot the hostages. And Did you say hostages? hostages? Yeah. So there's a hostage crisis going on as well. You want to call it a crisis? Okay, it's a crisis. Ladies and gentlemen, not only has the premier been assassinated, but we've now just learned that there is a hostage incident going on uh, as we Ted, speak. Ted, at the... if I could interrupt you? Uh, yes, I'd please like to do, point Bill. something out. Go ahead. The flag that's hung above the stage is made up of 3,000 roses, believe it or not, and apparently it was made by third graders from all over the city, and they're real roses, and it's very, uh, very Bill, nice. Bill, I'm afraid I don't see the connection between the flag and the terrorist. There is none whatsoever, Ted. Uh, I, I, I see. Um, do you know what the terrorist demands are, Bill? No. Well, is there any way you could find out? Well, I could ask the guy. He's standing right next to me here. Well, uh, then ask him for God's sake. Hey, okay. hey, you want to be on the radio? Yeah, sure. Okay, just say your demands into the mic here. Okay, uh, I demand that this sketch ends right now, and we go on to the next thing. And now, it's Trivia Time with Mel Frankis. Hello, hello, welcome trivia fans of all ages and all age groups. I'm Mel Frankis, and welcome to Trivia Time with Mel Frankis. We have some trivial information for you tonight of an interesting nature, and uh, I think you'll be very surprised and excited and entertained by what I have to tell you this evening. We'll start tonight with a bit of information of about uh, starting with uh, Humphrey Bogart. Uh, in that movie there, he didn't say, play it again, Sam. Okay? You think that he did, right? But you're wrong because he actually said something else about playing the piano. So uh, there you go. 
wake up and smell the coffee on that one. Uh, and now of a more modern nature, uh, a film, a classic film, a favorite of mine, The Godfather by De Niro, a very good film. Uh, you think, everybody thinks that they say, an offer you can't refuse, right? You, people talk about this movie, they say, The Godfather, an offer you can't refuse. Well, uh, you'll have to find out now that uh, they didn't say that in that movie. It's, uh, that line is actually on the cutting room floor. Surprise, surprise again. And that's a bit of information about The Godfather. And one little bit more pieces of uh, itsy bit of information about The Godfather. Marlon Brando didn't die in that movie at the end. You think that he died, but that was an acting thing he did and, uh, with the orange in the mouth, and he's still kicking and alive, uh, Marlon Brando. So I hope you learned something on Trivia Time. I'm Mel Frankis. Good night and God bless. Radio Free Vestibule is pleased to present The Invention of the Dog. Eureka! Why do birds suddenly appear Every time you are near Could it be you have bird seed on your head? Why do stars fall out of the sky every time you walk by? Could it be you have a special machine that makes stars fall out of the sky? On the day that you were born, the angels got together and decided to go bowling down the street. And then they went home and had a sandwich, but that has absolutely nothing to do with you. Why do all of the boys in town follow you all around? Could it be that they're really impressed you have a machine that makes stars fall out of the sky and they want to know if they can borrow it for the weekend, not this weekend, but the one after? From the makers of Clack and Prum come Flack and Pull. Flack and Pull are an unbeatable combination at home, work, or outside behind someone's garage. If the stores are open, get some Flack and some Pull today. Your family will thank you for it. They will say... Thank you for the Flack. And thank you for the Pull also. It's no wonder that we like to say a day without Flack and Pull is like a day without something you like as much as you like Flack and Pull. Flack and Pull. Anything else is something that is not as good as Flack and Pull. Dum 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 d